Thank you, Lord, for this new day. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If our faith is wavering in any way, or we have doubts that you are living, that you are active in the world, that you are present in our lives, then I pray that you would strengthen our faith and reignite it and give us a boldness and an assurance. Open our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds to your word and let it wash over us and encourage us today. In your precious name I pray. Amen. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. The Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns and places he planned to visit. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. Now go and remember that I am sending you out as lambs among wolves. Don't take any money with you, nor a traveller's bag, nor an extra pair of sandals, and don't stop to greet anyone on the road. Whenever you enter someone's home, first say, May God's peace be on this house. If those who live there are peaceful, the blessing will stand. If they are not, the blessing will return to you. Don't move around from home to home. Stay in one place, eating and drinking what they provide. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality, because those who work deserve their pay. If you enter a town and it welcomes you, eat whatever is set before you, heal the sick, and tell them the kingdom of God is near you now. But if a town refuses to welcome you, go out into its streets and say, We wipe even the dust of your town from our feet to show that we have abandoned you to your fate. And know this, the kingdom of God is near. I assure you, even wicked Sodom will be better off than such a town on Judgment Day. What sorrow! awaits you, Chorazin and Bethsaida, for if the miracles I did in you had been done in wicked Tyre and Sidon, their people would have repented of their sins long ago, clothing themselves in burlap and throwing ashes on their heads to show their remorse. Yes, Tyre and Sidon will be better off on Judgment Day than you. And you, people of Capernaum, will you be honoured in heaven? No, you will go down to the place of the dead. Then he said to the disciples, Anyone who accepts your message is also accepting me, and anyone who rejects you is rejecting me, and anyone who rejects me is rejecting God who sent me. When the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. At that same time, Jesus was filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. And he said, Oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to the childlike. 
Yes, father, it pleased you to do it this way. My father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the son except the father, and no one truly knows the father except the son, and those to whom the son chooses to reveal him. Then, when they were alone, he turned to the disciples and said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you have seen. I tell you, many prophets and kings long to see what you see, but they didn't see it. And they long to hear what you hear, but they didn't hear it. One day, an expert in religious law stood to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbour as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, Do this, and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbour? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was travelling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. The next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbour to the man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, Yes, now go and do the same. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught, but Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, help us to take the example of Mary, sitting at your feet, O Lord, and listening to you. It is so easy to, to be busy doing lots of things but ultimately it's that time we spend before you in your wonderful presence that is the most precious and I thank you for the, the parable of the Good Samaritan the Israelites and the Samaritans back then they didn't have a good relationship at all and I know that they were viewed negatively they were viewed not in a good way by by the Israelites 
And yet, it was the Samaritan that helped the Israelite that had been hurt. Basically, he, he loved his enemy. Teach us, Father God, to, to do all we can when we have the opportunity, whether it be someone we don't particularly like. Whoever it is, Father, let us love everybody and help us to give as the Samaritan gave and help us to give as you give. Thank you, my Lord, that the kingdom of heaven is near. The kingdom of God is near. Help us to live our lives as if we believe that. In your precious name I pray, my Lord. Amen.